So Dirk has managed to convince the world that he's no longer a gangster from the most dangerous set in Chicago, the Black Disciples of Oblock. But our sources on the streets of Chicago have revealed that Lil Dirk is still very much active in the gang activities that go on within. That's before all the shooting was going on, like, we could do all that. Before the year 2013, Lil Durk had little to no claim to fame, hence the spotlight he has received today wasn't on him. But with the rise of his career, Lil Durk began gaining ground in the public space and had many eyes watching his every move, down to his moves on the streets of Oblock. Lil Durk had to find a way to become the ghost of Oblock, and the best way to go about it was through his music. Man, the streets were hot for Durk back then. He couldn't make no moves without the paparazzi bursting in on him. He had the top moving gangster, you know? With his claim to fame, Lil Durk had to find a way to prove his fellow black disciples that the fame hadn't changed him, and he was still a gangster at heart. So Lil Durk decided to rap Oblock by dissing his fallen ops in his music. FBG, Wooski, and OPB got hit in his T.O.P., and he ain't even die. I've seen so many young lose their lives. That's why when I go to a funeral today, I don't even cry. These were the words of rapper Lil Durk as he rapped on the track 248. The lyrics were a reference to the hit carried out by gangster disciple rapper FBG Wooski by an O-Block gangster. When Wooski got hit in 2018, the block was hot. That man ran his mouth too much, so they decided to put a bullet in it. He just got lucky. On October 22nd, 2018, 63rd rapper FBG Wooski went to the funeral of Dooski the Man, a fellow 63rd rapper who was taken out during a drive-by attack in September 2018 at the Washington Park neighborhood. It was about 12.30 p.m. on that fateful day when the family and friends of Dooski the Man were gathered outside the Bethlehem Star Missionary Baptist Church for his funeral. Unknown to them, their ops from Oblock had planned to carry out another attack on the members of the Gangster Disciples present. Their prime target, FBG Wooski. We had to drop that Wooski was at Dooski's funeral, so we had to pop in there and let them know we run the wreck. While Dooski's funeral was still going on, the gangsters from Oblock showed up and opened fire in the air, hitting at least six people. However, with Wooski being their prime target, he suffered the most severe injury as he was hit in the head. Many believe that Wooski had passed away after getting hit in such a delicate area. On my mama, we thought Wooski wasn't gonna make it. It was crazy, bro. Shortly after the incident, 63rd rapper FBG Duck took to his Instagram page to announce that FBG Wooski did not pass away from the injuries he sustained during the attack. FBG Duck wrote on his Instagram, Stop saying R.I.P. Wooski. He not dead. The wrong with you, dumb people. I really see this internet be you people up. It wasn't until three weeks after the incident that people believed that Wooski was still alive. These 63rd guys were posting videos of Wooski from the hospital. His head was all wrapped up, man. They really knocked his top off. On November 11th, 2018, about three weeks after the incident, a video of the rapper in good condition playing cards and listening to music with his friends surfaced online, followed by an Instagram post from King Op underscore Wooski saying, Wooski is up and talking. Thanks for all the prayers. He said, tell y'all on Cheeto. Much love to the supporters. Wooski is good, up and talking. Before we keep going, if you want to stay up to date with the darkest truths from the streets of Chicago coming from our insider sources, make sure to subscribe to Rap Hive to get first-hand information on all rap stories. Lil Durk's lyrics were an obvious reference to Wooski, who got hit at the top of his head at a funeral and survived. Dissing FBG Wooski was a way of letting people know that he may be in ghost mode, but he is still in no black gangster disciple. But that wasn't the only song where Lil Durk proved his loyalty to Oblock. And one of the biggest gang hits that has happened in the Oblock Black Disciples and 63rd Gangster Disciples gang wars, Lil Durk once again proved that he operated in the gang activities in the shadows as he released a track where he dissed the late 63rd rapper FPG Duck on several tracks. FPG Duck. Basically, you don't want to with me anyway, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it ain't really about we with Dirk, so we ain't gonna. Well, right, cause you ain't grow up with dirt. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Y'all don't, y'all ain't grow up with dirt. Y'all been knowing dirt about two, three years or something like that. Right, Whatever, three, four, however long it's been. Right, you ain't from where he from. Right, you don't owe him no loyalty that you think you owe him. You see what I'm saying? Like to feel like 
you can't make money with the next man. On the tracks, should have ducked and back in blood. Lil Durk taunted his ops on 63rd as he dissed one of the prominent rappers from the Gangsta Disciples, FBG Duck, who was slain amidst the gang war between the two sets. Lil Durk made a clear reference to FBG Duck on the track, should have ducked, where he outrightly called his name. Lil Durk rapped, I told my PO through the gate that I get high as... She asked me how high do I get high as duck. On the track Back in Blood, Lil Durk sent another diss to the late FPG Duck as he rapped, he was dissing on my cousin, now he in that wood. These lyrics were subtle acknowledgments from Lil Durk that he was aware of the things FPG Duck had said about old black rappers who were taken out during the gang war. Yo, it's your boy FBG Duck. Duck didn't speak on FBG Duck. We was thinking he ain't cool when one went down. But when he dropped tracks back to back, this and Duck, we knew for sure that Duck would still be the. Lil Durk referred to FBG Duck's murder on both tracks, saying high as Duck was a reference to the fact that FBG Duck was now flying high. And rapping, now he in that wood, referred to FBG Duck being buried in a coffin just after digging his cousins and other Roblox fallen disciples. On August 4th, 2020, rapper FBG Duck was gunned down in an attack on the street corners of Chicago. The attack on FBG Duck's life happened a couple of weeks after he released a diss track mocking at least nine old black rappers who got caught up in the gang war between the sets and lost their lives. FBG Duck must have felt big in the studio rapping about my homies like that. Man's dissed on Sheroy, J Money, and the gang. They thought he can get away with it. They caught bro slipping and he didn't see it coming. On July 10th, 2020, FBG Duck released the title, Dead where he called out a couple of Oblak's fallen disciples, including Odie Perry, who the infamous Oblak was named after. FBG Duck rapped on the song, said I wasn't gonna diss the dead, and okay, I did it. But T-Roy and Odie, them dead. FBG Duck proceeded to diss more fallen disciples on the track. He rapped through the track. Y'all heard about Jay Money? I know you heard about Lil Boo. Yeah. You heard about Sheroy? Yeah. You know about Lil Steve? I'll go to d -thang Grave and take a piss on that. If Keta was alive, I'd make that suck my. The track sparked outrage in Oblock, with some of the top rappers from Oblock dissing FBG Duck right back. However, someone from Lil Durk's camp, who has since been identified as Oblock gangster King Von, put a $100,000 bounty on FBG Duck's head. King Von, who acted under the ghost of Oblock, Lil Durk, and carried out his dirty street business, offered a sum of $50,000 for anyone who was going to take out FBG Duck. But when no one took up the challenge, he upped the price to $100,000 and added that he would give out diamond chains to whoever took up the job. Basically, FBG Duck, he goes to like this opulent area, okay, it's this rich part of Chicago, it's called like the Gold Coast, right? He goes shopping for his son. Now he goes shopping for his son and apparently goes with his girlfriend and some other person I think too. Hops out the car and he's waiting online, all right? Well, first big mistake, you know, you shouldn't be waiting online when you got someone's beef, but I get it. Now he's probably thinking he's in a safe part, he doesn't, like, there's no ops that's going to have money to buy stuff, so they're probably won't going to be around. It was about 4.30 p.m. on that fateful summer evening when FBG Duck went out shopping, along with the mother of his son, to get a birthday gift for their kid. Just as he made his way out of the Dosha and Gabbana store at 68 East Oak Street, FBG Duck was fired at and injured on his chest, neck, and groin area. He was taken to the hospital almost immediately, but he couldn't be saved. Now, they hop in two cars. One's a Chrysler, one's a Ford Fusion. Muwap is in Ford Fusion, and this other guy who they keep referring to as Liggins, okay, he's in the um, uh, um, Chrysler, all right? And basically, his name is C. Myrna. C. Thing is also, uh, I, I believe, in one of the vehicles as well. And here's the thing what happens. A few months after the attack, five men from Oblak, including rapper OTF Muwap, who was affiliated with Lil Durk, the ghost of Oblak, were arrested and charged with the murder of FBG Duck. Hey, Lil Mike, yo, what house? Get the f*** out of my life. Yeah. I ain't yeah. your ass in the house on BD girl, my line. Yeah. Boot your ass in the crib on Kane David. The crib man on Kane David. Pop out on Kane David. I'm outside when I'm outside it's that. Although Lil Durk may not be directly connected to these hits when investigations are carried out, word on the streets of Chicago is that no old black op goes down without his say so. Perkyo. Back then, we'd have been chilling, we'd have sit on the porch. We'd have been eating, but now since the violence got so crazy, it's like we gotta really be on point now. Like, I'm saying, it's all about being smart. Staying away from the front of Old Block's gang activities over the years has saved Lil Durk from being labeled as a gangster on the internet and by the feds. But the truth is, he still partakes in a series of gang activities on the low. 
in order to take the eyes of the feds off him so he could peacefully carry out his gang activities. Lil Durk did what no Chicago gangster has ever done before. He hired a lookalike. Y'all seen that video? That Perkyo did look like Dirk 100. Everyone wanted Perkyo to come through the old block so we could see what the hype was about. When we saw him, bro, it was crazy. I tell you, that Perkyo looked like Dirk, no cap. In April 2022, Lil Durk made headlines after it was announced that he had hired a lookalike to take his place and represent him when he couldn't show up. People couldn't help but ask who this lookalike was. Where did Lil Durk find him? And just how much did he look like Lil Durk? Perkyo is a social media influencer who has received thousands of comments, with people telling him he shared a striking resemblance with Lil Durk. These comments encouraged the lookalike to put out skits of himself mimicking Lil Durk. He made these videos alongside his girlfriend, Kayla Thaler, who on the other hand, imitated Lil Durk's ex-fiance, India Royale. Although famous on the internet, Perkyo wanted to get Lil Durk's attention. So on Thursday, April 7th, Perkyo collaborated with YouTuber King Sid to prank people at Florida's Broward County Mall. Lil Durk, man. Oh my God. Look, y'all, today we pulling off a crazy stunt, man. I ain't gonna lie. We had to sell this one. We have a meet and greet at the mall. While at the mall, Perkyo dressed in expensive clothes to play the part of Lil Durk perfectly. He went to the mall with bodyguards to make it all seem real. Fans of Lil Durk gathered around Perkyo, thinking it was O Black's very own gangster in their mix. Perkyo mirrored every part of Lil Durk, from his hairdo to his tattoos, the way he walked, and most importantly, he had the exact same eyes as Lil Durk. It was easy to believe that it was, in fact, Lil Durk, walking in the midst of these fans at the mall. In a 15 minute video shared on YouTube, YouTuber King Sid, who Perkyo collaborated, did all he could to convince fans that Perkyo was truly Lil Durk. They rented a Lamborghini, a security team, hired fake paparazzi, and even copied Durk's tattoos. Hundreds of fans cheered on the fake Lil Durk and posed with him for dozens of photos. What's good, man? Yeah, going, bro. <laughs> What's up? When you drop going, huh? When you drop me on deluxe. Me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Perkyo achieved his goal. He caught Lil Durk's attention, and this sparked his fame. Lil Durk came across the video of Perkyo at the mall. Impressed by their striking resemblance, Lil Durk decided to share the video of Perkyo on his Instagram page. But with Lil Durk's recognition of Perkyo, came a huge responsibility for the social media influencer who never imagined that he would get entangled in Lil Durk's dark web of gang wars. Hey, no. What would what, what they, they be calling you, though? Like, outside? Why oh, they be calling me, um, Dirt, you know, every, everywhere I go, to the store, Dirt. Even before I got the the the, the dreads, the luck. Yeah. Yeah, at school, every, everywhere I go, they be calling me Dirt. After discovering him online, Lil Dirk took his relationship with Perkyo up a notch. He proceeded to invite the lookalike to meet with him in person. An excited Perkyo saw this as the greatest opportunity of his life to be recognized by such a huge figure as Lil Dirk. On meeting with Lil Dirk in person, things began to get better for Perkyo. He got bigger gigs and even went as far as appearing in a music video for Lil Dirk. I'm saying you told her you shy? Huh? You told her you shy? Yeah, I told her I was shy. <laughs> Cause he was in public, man. He was in public. I'm not used to social media. Man, you gotta change that is over with now. Huh? I said that shot shit is over with now. Yeah, it's over now. I ain't gonna <laughs> but we, uh, we gotta do a mukbang though, that shit would be fine. <laughs> in the music video for his track, Blacklist, Lil Durk allowed Perkyo to appear in some of the scenes. Lil Durk went on to post a clip from the music video on his Instagram page with the caption, Perkyo shooting Blacklist with the real Jerry. Lil Durk wrote with multiple laughing emojis in the caption, this might be the biggest ish, 2022. Appearing in Lil Durk's music video was only the tip of the iceberg, and the story of how Perkyo became Lil Durk's pawn as he carried out his gangsta activities in ghost mode. Shortly after Perkyo appeared in Lil Durk's music video, Lil Durk called him up on stage during one of his performances in Miami on April 19th, 2022. Lil Durk was performing on stage in Miami, and he called out to Perkyo to join him. The lookalikes were seen jumping and dancing to Lil Durk's music as he asked the audience to make some noise for Perkyo. Y'all make some more noise for Perkyo. 
Berkio hanging around Lil Durk so much became quite suspicious. Fans understood that the idea of having such a spot on lookalike was exciting, but when Perkio began hanging around Lil Durk all the time, it became obvious that the relationship between the two was a whole lot more than content for viewers on social media. Sources from the streets of Oblock began talking about seeing Perkio on the streets of Chicago and that sometimes he walked around Oblock. I sure as hell know that Dirk didn't come into town. So how the hell does someone that looks like Dirk walking around Oblock? Perkio had no idea what Lil Dirk had in store for him. Fans had speculated that Lil Dirk was going to involve him in his gang activities when Perkio started hanging around Lil Dirk a lot. But they never really thought he'd go through with it. It turned out that Lil Dirk had hired Perkio to be his clone in order for him to carry out his gang activities on the low without gaining attraction from the cops. When we heard what Dirk was up to with the Perkio kid, I thought to myself, this man's smart as hell. I mean, my man went and copped himself a whole human being just so he could hang around his brothers on the block for real, for real. The ghost of Oblock. Hiring Perkio was the first step Lil Durk took to becoming the ghost of Oblock, to make his footsteps in the gang activities untraceable. But while Lil Durk operated in the shadows as the ghost of Oblock, Perkio was exposed to the dangers that surrounded Lil Durk's life. It didn't take a while before one of Lil Durk's ops spotted Perkio and took his revenge on him. On April 26, 2022, the world got to see firsthand the consequences of being Lil Durk's lookalike, as Perkio was picked on and taunted by one of Lil Durk's ops, 6 9 it all began when 6 9 set up Perkio through a YouTuber to meet with him anonymously. Perkio had gone innocently, thinking he was going to collaborate with YouTuber Steve Will Do It. Nelk Boys, yeah. Actually, Nelk Boys, you feel me? They hit me up on IG. They sent me, they said, do I want to collab with anything and everything? I was like, all right, yeah, bet. I'm going to collab with them. So I start, you know, we chopped it up and everything. They said, all right. So they sent me the ID. They said, we gonna collab. However, on getting to the location, he was ambushed by 6 9 and some of his goons who were looking to call out Lil Durk. 6 9 shared a video of himself and Berkio to his Instagram in a bid to offend Lil Durk. He proceeded to pull a jacket out of the bag and wrap it around Berkio's shoulders. The frightened Berkio didn't realize that he was being used as a pawn to taunt Lil Durk and the late King Von. At the back of his jacket was an image of the late King Von, Lil Durk's right hand man. Posting the video to his Instagram page, 6 9 wrote in the caption, At Lil Dirt, I had a gift for you, bro. A King Von from the O. Yo, ain't never gonna slide. But they definitely rep you all day on t-shirts. Of course, 6 9 Zach sparked a reaction from Lil Dirk, who simply tweeted, Bro, I just not seen this today on the internet. This crazy. Everybody calling and texting me. We went number one again. Thank y'all. LOL. But while Lil Dirk seemed unfazed about the Berkio harassment situation, that was the last time Berkio was heard from. He stopped hanging around Lil Dirk, and he was no longer seen on the streets of Oblock. Lil Dirk has continued to operate silently, both in the music industry and in his gang activities. But do you think one day he'll be caught, involved in some shady gang-related activity? Could his fate end up the same as King Von's?